One, raspberries. The raspberries know that it takes confidence to get by in the world. But what does a construction worker, for example, know about anger management? Up on her ladder, her hammer wails on the deck chairs, forcing them into place. Sorry, on the deck stairs, forcing them into place. Maybe she knows quite a bit. We might take comfort after her work, seated at the kitchen table, rubbing a cup of raspberry tea, raising it to our lips, looking out at our raspberry patch, the foliage, the light green. Two, rabbits. Rabbits are not just gray, but combine gray and brown, hazel and pure white, even some black threads through the fur. He sits and wriggles his nose until spooked. I have difficulty describing the rabbit in my yard without thinking about trapping him in my have a heart. Three, the glossy buckthorn near the maple. Glossy buckthorn, you remind me of photographic paper, male, deer, our town, invasive plant species, chest wall strains, stubbornness, trout skeleta, and the bittersweet you're so chummy with in that order. Four, sweet garlic mustard. There are so many of them, fat, squat bouquets, and, and, and once bloomed skinny flower skewers. Sorry. And once bloomed skinny skewers, flowers so white, nothing could be purer. Sometimes you forget they seed like the rabbits breed and spread and root, not just one tap root, a network of capillaries. So you think about how lucky it is you have all this painful mustard growing in your side yard each time you photograph it. Five, Virginia Creeper. Virginia, such a sweet, unassuming name. Your pinwheel leaves, your tendrils so dainty, but clearly your ancestry, the Creeper clan, wielded its devil power and was labeled for it. Virginia Creeper, you must have had a hard time at the shrink claiming you saw God as a child and what harm could you do? Your vines, some thin, others thicker than twigs, stay low, hidden an inch across my garden. Suddenly, a new leaf, I tug your root, tug, tug. Sometimes you yield, sometimes you are dug in. Six, poison ivy. Poison ivy enters our lives as children. When we play, not as identification, is our vocation. I always thought the red frills of the early spring leaves before they flatten green and shine are beautiful and declare this with my photograph, beautiful poison ivy. And though most anyone would love the picture, they don't, they don't like loving it with good reason. Many plants ignore us. Poison ivy prefers to be ignored. But if you accidentally pay attention, oh, how you pay. The poison stays with you days, nights, infiltrates your dreams, itches you awake. Thank you. Autumn shows up unexpected, never calls ahead. One bright morning, there you'll find her on your doorstep dressed in red. 
brings a spray of purple aster, jug of cider, maybe wine, and all you know is autumn's looking fine. Autumn always brings you presents, bag of apples, pumpkin pie. She takes you out to climb the mountain, silhouetted on the sky. Harvest moon above the hills, bold Orion burning bright. Autumn shows you magic in the night. Sometimes melancholy. Sometimes cheerful, sometimes chill When she greets you in the morning Never know what face she will be wearing But those constant changes Serve to keep you on your toes Who you'll meet tomorrow Only autumn knows Autumn wants to wander, here to visit, not to stay. Restless feet and swirling skirts, here's the call then on her way. Fire burning on the hearth, glowing coals to warm the evening. Still the world's a little colder. When autumn leaves Days are growing longer Winds are blowing stronger It's time for winter's song When autumn leaves Thank you. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love. I in my Annabelle Lee, a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her. And this is the reason that a wind blew from a cloud, chilling my Annabelle Lee, so that her high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in a kingdom by the sea. And the angels, not half so happy in heaven, went on envying her and me. Yes, this is the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that a wind came from a cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love that was more than love was more than many much older than we, and more than many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea could ever dissever my soul from the soul of my beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the stars never rise, but I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by her side in her sepulchre there by the sea in her tomb by the sounding sea. <clears throat> and my second Edgar piece, <clears throat> thank you. My second Edgar piece is Alone. From childhood's hour, I have not been. As others were, I have not seen. As others saw, I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source, I have not taken 
my sorrow I could not awaken, my heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of a most a stormy life was drawn, from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still, from the torrent of the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. Thank you. Edwin the Antelope was tiring of constantly running away from every clear and present danger, as well as endless false alarms. His true reflection in the river showed powerfully taut physique all through his chest and shoulders with formidable horns above. Was proud of his talent for springing up and over roadblocks ahead Maintaining a, a pace for great distance, maintaining a pace for great distance, nary a terrain could retard. His brethren would fight over females, bucking each other with aplomb. Yet, when a predator was since approaching, the herd's chronic druthers was fleeing, with everyone seeking the center, as the rear and the fringe were exposed. The vulnerability of the young neglected. The impotent herd concedes its thinning. Edwin's nights were tossing and turning, his sleep never leaving him refreshed. Till a gray wolf's providential visit in a dream exceedingly fitful. Your herd has no leadership structure, said the wolf with sapient eyes. Our pack has no fear of individuals, no matter the size of their weapons. Methinks you're in need of strategic planning, a sound method of attack. Your advantage lies in your numbers, with your horns coming from all angles. Next day, primed Edwin is drilling his company of reluctant recruits chosen for their aggressive defending of their own stable of fecund prizes. Anon, the moment of truth arrives. A lion springs from cover of tall grass. Their orders are to move forward, surround, strike, and jump back. Instinctively, they begin to panic. But Edwin's call brings them to a halt. The whole herd turns around and stares as Edwin charges the lion alone. Thank you. The trail cuts through trees, binds together the sculptures which are framed by shadows and a glint of sun suspended in the moment. Three ladies, uh, this is sec section two, three ladies armor-plated in shining silver garb cluster in the safety of the trees. No glimpse of leg or breast, only their clothes stand up to face the world. Metal skirts bind tight to guard against escape. No arms can move beyond the tight confines of metal sleeves. Where are the women underneath? Trapped and made invisible by a world of what should be. Their wordless cries are silent, static, lost in a land where the reality of female flesh cannot exist. Section 3. Family lurking in the shade, black blocks of limbs, white slabs of face, limply sprawled against the flat, cold green of plastic chairs. Nestled in the shadows, the curve of dog with tilted head. Section 4. 
the trail wanders on. The sculptures rest in shadows cast by the shifting leaves. Tomorrow is forever. A visitor is free to pause and look, then pass on by, able to move through time while statues, embalmed in silence, can only dream of what might be. Not knowing then that my marriage would end in divorce, I neglected to tell them that all love is good. No matter what, having loved someone matters. No matter how it ends or changes, love is never wasted. Never fear a broken heart, because the only way you can get one is by having love deeply, and deep love enriches the soul. Never think that once your heart is broken, you can't ever love again. Each time we love, we increase our capacity to love. The human heart is designed to love, and it has the capacity to grow and expand until it loves the whole world. Most of us run out of time before our hearts get big enough to hold love for the entire world. But many of us do come close. There was a lot I didn't know when I wrote love letters to my children, not just about love, but about the incredible mystery of life. So many things I didn't tell them because I didn't know then what I know now. So I would tell them that they are the stuff of stars, that the very atoms that pulse and vibrate inside us are from the stars. We are in the universe, and the universe is in us, all of us no matter when or where we lived. I would tell them that they are truly connected to every being who has ever lived or will ever live, that long after they have died, the atoms that were part of them will be somewhere in the universe, part of some other life, recycled in the air, the soil, a beautiful flower, a tree, or even another person. And because of this, we will never be separate from the rest of the world, from the earth that we live on, from the people we call enemies, and those we call friends. I would tell them, because I know it now, that everything they do makes a difference. Everything, really. Our actions have an impact far beyond our ability to know. The choices we make about what we eat, and how we live affect people everywhere, not just metaphorically or spiritually, but really. We share the earth with billions of people, and there will be billions more after we die. What we use and what we conserve affects them all. Wars we wage and wars we avert, avert affect them all. Discoveries we make and how we use them affect them all. They are us. And we are them, and for us in this room, only luckier. I would tell them that somehow we were chosen to be that accumulations of atoms that won the birth lottery. We were born to a life of relative plenty. And because of that, we have a responsibility. And I would tell them this too, none of us will ever make the whole difference. None of us can change the world because each and every one of us is needed. That the power of one really means the power of each one combined with the power of many others. That although they share the atoms from the same stars as the rest of us, they and each of us is a totally unique, unduplicatable individual person. That within each individual lies the future of the world. We are all chosen to use what is in us. The stuff that makes me, me, and you, you. No one else has that to offer. So shine like the stars that are within you and love so much that your heart expands until it can hold the whole world in its care. And know that as my heart grows, 
my love for you grows every day. Thank you. Yesterday's turned into tomorrow's. Some days when I wake and I lie there, still floating in some dream, half here, half there, I see you. I hear your tender voice with its slight lilt. I see your soft smile. I feel your warm touch. I smell your innocence, your seduction, your eternity. It startles me. I sit bolt upright, sweating, shaking, and I think I could almost reach out and hold you, but I can't. You are gone. No matter how many times I think of what I should have done or said, you still go. No more shaking, no more sharing inside jokes, holding hands, dancing to Quincy Jones, the dude, sipping wine in the moonlight, no more you. Yesterday's turn into tomorrow's, but the sorrow never goes away. Whoever said time heals never lost you. When eternity arrives and I see you in your mini skirt full of youth and excitement, I reach out and hold you tight. I will hold you tight forever. Yeah. Thank you. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. No matter what. Most of us have had difficulties in life, but somehow we keep on going. Do we ever say to ourselves because of our strength and our courage and our willpower, I am still here? Let's all sing it together. And remember to stamp your foot on the last word. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here, no matter what. In thinking about the many challenges that we meet in life, it creates a desire in me to hear each person's story of triumph, because I know that there is more to each of us than what we see on the surface. I am more than who you see, more than meets the eye, more than who I seem, no matter what. No matter what we are facing or have faced, you and I are still here because of our fortitude and determination. We are still here. Please see the light inside me. Know the light inside me. Bring out the light inside us, no matter what. As for those beautiful people who are internally locked up and can no longer speak their stories, I recognize that behind that silence vibrates an amazing, amazing life. Whether we can express ourselves now or can no longer communicate, Let's yearn to honor each person's life's journey. It is as if each of us are saying, please take the time to know me. Take the time to love me. Take the time to see me, no matter what. I marvel at our resilience with wonder. I am awestruck at the way the human spirit can shine through the darkness. Keep that courage, that strength, that resilience, that willpower, that hope. Because you and I are still here no matter what. Let's sing it. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here, no matter what. Yes, we are love, and we are breath, and
and you and I are still here. Please join me last time. No matter what. Thank you. I'm Dr. Susan Hardy. I'm Dr. Brenda King. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia, a condition that robs patients of memory and impairs their judgment and ability to understand and communicate. More than 5 million Americans are currently affected, with most of those over 65 years old. But the number of patients with the disease is increasing as our population is aging. While the effects of Alzheimer's on patients are cruel and tragic, the disease also takes an enormous physical and emotional toll on family and friends who act as caregivers. A caregiver's burden can take people by surprise and seem overwhelming. The stress and strain can begin early and it's important to find and use available resources. So if you are or will be caring for someone with Alzheimer's, act promptly to get help. To learn more, visit the Caregiver Center of the Alzheimer's Association. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.